Ah, it's about to come back to the shop. Is this in the right place? Yes, it is. Um, uh, what's I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, hopefully it's a video. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I did a video recently of people... I was going to do it at the whiteboard. I can't get to the whiteboard at the moment. A lot of shit's in the way. So, I'm going to try and do it like this. Um, I'll probably end up messing it up, but we'll see how this turns out. So I did a video recently talking about that talk isn't talk, isn't a force, and then some example with a hammer and an allen key and some bricks and some saws and some wood. And a lot of people didn't get that. Now, though, <laughs> it wasn't that a lot of people didn't get that. A lot of people in the comments called me a complete fucking twat saying I don't understand anything. All right then. Um, so maybe it needs a bit more of an explanation. And let's start with the talk thing first, because a lot of people really didn't understand that bit. So talk is not a force, right? I'm just going to say it again, just to make it sink in. Talk is a mathematical construct that we, and and you know, it's a, a, a verbal construct. It's an idea to get across two things. It's to differentiate it from just a normal linear force. So basically, you know, if I say, well, it's the torque, you know, it's about going round something, right? Um, but not only that is, is it's also there to help us, um, it's an easy way to calculate stuff. So I was, go I did find some, uh, document a document from um uh the bifa i think it's bifa basically it's the iso stuff right the definitions of what is it and i was going to go through this big pdf where it explains and then when i was reading it again and again and again and then i read it out to the missus it it just it's just as confusing because it says derived forces and stuff like that which doesn't help let me put it this way. I'll put a little thing up. Yeah, I'll put a little thing up. The reason I can demonstrate in the most simple way why torque isn't a force, and it's because I can make it disappear. If you, and I'll, I'll put something, like I said, I was gonna do this on the board, but uh, I can do it with this actually. No, sod it, let's do it with this. So let's just say that this is a pivotal center here at the head, right? And then the end's just winging around like this. If we apply a force here, right, and it's fixed at the head, we apply a force here, we call this a torque. Just imagine this is a pin, you know what I mean? And it just goes around it like that. The problem comes when you have just, say, a force applied there. So we apply a force down there, it goes all the way down here to the central pivotal point, and we're not applying force to anything because the definition is, a force perpendicular to a line radially coming out with out out from the pivotal center. So pivotal center down here, we call this the moment arm, and we call this a moment in engineering. The reason why I did that video and is to stop people thinking about torque as a as a as a twisty force because it doesn't make sense when you get to other things, right? People. When you start explaining meshing between gears, right, and you talk about a 20 degree pressure angle and stuff like that, people look at you like you're a fucking lunatic. And it's because it all stems from this idea that talk is this twisting force and it's not. Because, let's just say we've got a vertical here, right, and then this arm here, we have an angle, right? So we call it 90 degrees like this, and we apply a force straight down with our vertical at 90 degrees. This is perpendicular. Then you come here at 45 degrees, and you've got 45 degrees here, and it's sign of angles and all this kind of shite. But when we get here, and we're at zero, right, so the moment arm is at zero, it's vertical, and we apply our force here, and our torque is zero. So in other words, torque has disappeared, but the force hasn't. The force is just, say, 10 newtons. We'll just pick a force. The moment arm is still the same length. The pivot's the same. So everything is the same, 
The difference is, is this angle is now zero. So our torque is zero. So now all of a sudden, our torque is now, not only is it a force and a moment arm around a pivotal center, but it's also in conjunction with what this angle is. Well, hang about, there's no description that anyone has ever said or pointed out saying that torque is equal to a force, a, a, you know, a, a force times a distance from the pivotal center at said angle, right? That's how you work out torque. But what I'm saying is, is the, the definition is people just say, oh, it's just a force around the center. It's a twisting force. But a twisting force makes it sound like it's like a clock. So it goes through 360 degrees or it goes through 12 degrees. It doesn't state that you have to then define what your zero point is. And that's why torque doesn't exist. It's just an idea because when you apply a force here, it just turns into a linear force. It means that the force, the fundamental force is just a linear force and it always is. Torque is bollocks and it just helps us, right? It's easy, when you say torque, you know it means around and around and around, right? So when you say, oh, it's the torque at the crank or it's the, you know, whatever. You don't have to add all these stupid things in like, well, it's the it's the force perpendicular, this lever angle at this moment, at this, angle. you don't have to say all that shit. You can just say it's 60 newton meters. And from that 60 newton meters, if you then get an hour out of that, an output or an input, you can then work out what the force actually is, which is what we always come back to. And this is why I say why it's so important, because that's how we work it out. Doing engineering and stuff like that, that's how you work it out, right? Talk, you can just write a number and it helps with gears and shit like that, but that's it. So all those people who said, you've missed the most basic thing in engineering. Well, you haven't. It's, <laughs> this is the point. It's your misunderstanding, if you said that. It's your misunderstanding that makes it difficult to understand certain aspects um, of forces and torque and stuff like that. And it does get confusing. This is the thing when you start looking at free body diagrams and when you start looking at moments and when you start looking at pressure angles and when you start looking at hoop stress and tangentials and all this other shite when you start looking at that that's why it starts to become complicated because you've got this idea in your head that there's this twisty thing that it's just this twisty thing and it's like when you start talking about talk at an infinite you know infinitesimal distance from a pivotal center so if you were trying to rotate an atom you know, what is the torque then and stuff like that? How does it, you know, multiply out? And it just starts to get silly. You know, so when you start talking about an infinitely thin thread and when you try and talk, apply a torque to that, you start getting bollocks, right? You start getting all sorts. This is all new and stuff. And this is why it was difficult to understand. Also, when you start getting to, into angular momentum, angular acceleration, rotational inertia, you, and stuff like gyroscopic precession, stuff like that, uh, flywheel effects, stuff like that. When you start looking at gyros and stuff, you really need to start to understand right-handed rules and torque vectors and pseudo vectors and all this stuff. You need to start understanding that torque really is just a construct in our mind to make things easier. That's number one. Number two is let's get to the point about um, the whole, uh, and I was going to do it with a hammer, didn't have a hammer at the time, but I was saying about a saw. So I'll get it, fuck it. I'm saying about a saw and a hammer. Now this is again another misunderstanding of engineering. This is why I said this. And a lot of people didn't like it. That's because they have the misunderstanding of engineering and engines in the real world. So the whole point was, is that a saw is, each individual tooth is like a cycle, right? So you can think about like a two stroke, two strokes, two teeth. Call every single tooth a stroke. If you do that, you know, you do it slowly, that's how many teeth are doing their thing. You know, you pick a point and you go across it in time, right? And then the more of these you do, the more work gets done. Right, 
So you can think of this like power, right? You can think of every time there's a stroke, you can call it a two-cylinder two-stroke. Every time there's a stroke, there's a tooth, you can call it every time that's a power stroke, right? Think of it like that. Right, so the quicker I do this, the higher my RPM per tooth and the more work is being done, but it requires me more energy to go faster. That's that one. This one, which is the one I was hoping was going to fuck a lot of people up, and it did, was the whole tapping an Allen key on a... I was, like I said in the video, I was going to use an hammer. You know, you could use a pen, right, like that, or you can use a big fuck off armor, you know what I mean? So the whole point of this is again another mis misconception. And it's because people then start talking about abstract things in, in mathematics. Um, you'll hear people say stuff like, a hundred horsepower is a hundred horsepower. If you have a diesel engine you know, with big fuck off pistons that revs to 12 at uh, 2000 RPM and it makes a hundred horsepower. That's the same as a bike engine that can, you know, little tiny little diddy thing, little fucking pistons like this that can make a hundred horsepower. And that is wrong. Mathematically, yes. In reality, no. And that was the whole point about the Allen key thing, right? Because the whole hammer Allen key brick thing was about basically force. Right, not to be confused with the RPM and power thing, right? Actual force. The way to describe this, we'll go back to using hammers again. The way to describe this is simple. When you go boom, right, and you get a big ignition event, it produces a pressure inside this cylinder. The temperature goes up, the pressure goes up, and that applies a force to a surface area, which is your piston, which pushes it down. Right now, that force in this cylinder is directly a cause of how much fuel you have in there and what the energy value of that fuel is. So, and the surface area of the piston basically. So, if you put more fuel, you know, no replacement for displacement, if you put more fuel in there and you have a bigger engine basically to be able to capture that amount of energy that's released then you can get more force out of it simple concept and that's the whole point if you had a massive 50 ton mass to move you had your piston and it was a 50 cc moped and it went boom right the forces the basically the resistance of that 50 tons would stall that engine. That's it. That little 50 cc would go and it would just hit an immovable, an immovable object and that would be it, right? The engine would just fucking stall out. You could have that engine rev to its maximum RPM, right? Have it just go to its maximum RPM of fucking 12,000 RPM and dump the clutch, right? If it had a clutch kind of thing. And again, it would stall, right? because the friction between that and your clutch plates, it would overcome the clutch. The resistant forces would overcome the clutch. You'd snag and you'd burn out your clutch because an engine is not creating constant force. This is the problem. When you write down mathematically, well, my engine produces 100 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, right? One, that is force multiplied by that 7,000 RPM. If you're not doing 7,000 RPM, it doesn't matter. You know, you're not producing that force, uh, that power. But even if you are, like I say, you're at 7,000 RPM, you dump the clutch, it goes boom, the piston goes down, but on the way, it's not constant force. On the way back up again, just say it's a two-stroke, it's boom, but then now... I don't know, 45, 50 degrees, uh, 90 degrees of the piston, of the crankshaft rotation, your force has just dropped right off. So if that peak force does not equal the resistance forces, just say inertia, rolling road resistance, fucking anything, if it does not basically surpass that, is more than that, then it won't go anywhere and the engine will stall, right? 
So this is getting out of that idea of, but the math says this versus reality. You know, you might say, well, my engine produces, I don't know, 92 newton meters of torque, but it's not constant. That's an average of the whole cycle. Your peak might be even higher than that. But the fact of the matter is, is that peak is for a moment. It's a hundredth, a tenth of a second. And if that peak is not big enough versus the resistant forces. Now, I know people are going to say this is semantics and stuff like that. But people do argue with this point in the comments. They do say to me, no, nah, no, nah, you're wrong. A hundred horsepower is a hundred horsepower. And it's not. Because when you do the sums, force times RPM, stuff like this, you're getting averages. Right? You, that, that force is the average. That's the output averaged over the entire running duration of that engine. If that, it just doesn't work that way. So what I'm saying is, a 300 horsepower diesel engine, right, does not mean that a 300 horsepower MotoGP engine can do the same work. It can do the same job because these are not continuous output devices. Even electric motors are not. As you're going between each pole, and you know the repulsion of whatever you have your peak force but in between them poles well there's torque stalling you, know, you can talk talk stall or drill something like that even though that might be lower than your peak now electric motors have so many poles and all the rest of it usually it's fine they just use momentum but even the momentum can't get you over some of these things and it is fundamentally wrong just to say 100 horsepower from one engine is the same as 100 horsepower from another Theoretically, on paper, without anything else involved, yes it is. Now I'm going to do a video soon about a MotoGP video, which is about a comment. It's actually an email and a video that someone sent me, who then told me I was full of shite. <laughs> We're going to go through that video next. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.